Jesus is Lord. And you are Lord and we're calling upon you. Let a baptism of truth come to the church that it's never experienced before. Lord, enlighten them with visions, with revelations in the night. Let the mysteries of your word open up to them that they've never experienced before. You said the truth would make us free, would set us free. And we're calling unto you, Lord. We're not asking for judgment nor death, but we're asking for life and life more abundant. We're asking for these babies to live and not die. Lord, you've been patient and kind and long-suffering with this nation. Lord, we've seen what has happened to other countries. There's famine in Africa. The little elephants are dying because there's no water. But you yet you said to Jonah, the animals were imported. That was the last verse in the book of Jonah. Besides the people, the animals were there, and you had mercy on them. Now, God, we ask for mercy, but we ask for clarity. God, we ask for eyes to be open. We ask for an awakening in the heart of every doctor and every nurse involved in abortion in this nation. In the name of Jesus, let people remember what happened to Madeline O'Hara. Nobody ever talks about that. What a horrible death she died because she changed this country and caused people to sin and lie. Caused judgment to overtake us. Lord, we ask that you do this in your name. We're calling upon you. Lord, it shall work a work that no man can say it was of their doings, but it was of your will and your purpose. In the name of Jesus, whereby we're all saved, we're all healed, and we're all victorious. In the name of Jesus, that wonderful name, that beautiful name, that glorious name, that lovely name. Power and healing and deliverance in your name. We thank you for the authority that you've given us. Lord, there's women that are thinking about it now. They've got themselves in a bad place. Or they just don't want the baby. God, I pray that you reverse every situation. Every decision. Reverse it in Jesus' name. Come on, reverse it. Come on, believe God. Reverse it. Reverse it. Come on, let me hear some crying come from you. Hallelujah. Cry out. He said, cry aloud and spare not. Come on, we don't want the, the rocks praising for us or anything else. But we're going to cry aloud. Oh, God, help us. Help us in this nation. Help us, Lord. We need help. Lord, we're in the need people more than we realize what's coming down the road. Oh, God, we don't see it. We don't know what could possibly happen to our loved ones. And those that understand not the way. Oh, God, we ask for clarity. We ask for the right president. We ask for one that will be strong. And I don't believe you've let Trump go through everything he's been through if he's not going to come out on the right side. I thank you, Lord, for doing the righteous thing in the right person that's going to stand in office in this nation. Hallelujah. 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 Help us, help us, help us, help us. Help us, Lord, even the Jews cry it out. How long, oh God, how long, how long? Lord, it's been 50 years they've been killing these babies. It's too long for this nation, Lord. What has happened to the wise men? What has happened to the righteous, Lord? We ask for your help. Jesus. Your word says our help cometh from the Lord that created heaven and earth. There's no one else that can do what you do. There's no government, no amount of money, no number of people that can do what you can do in a moment. Lord, we ask. We ask, Lord, that you do something suddenly. 
You said the people in the wilderness had wearied you for 40 years because they didn't have your ways. Lord, we want the high and lofty place to come into. I pray, Lord, that the heavens are open today and you're hearing our prayer. You're seeing the work of our hands. Lord, let it be clean before you, our walk. Lord, let it be pure before you. Our hearts, let them be open before you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we can't make the horse drink the water. We can get them there, but we can't make the horse drink the water. God, cause a thirst to come in our lives for that that is pure and holy and righteous. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, give us a pure conscience. Lord, the conscience has been seared in many places in the church. Ramona, I want you to come and pray. I want your people, people be open. May God might tell you something today. Someone told me last week that was here. They're not here today. God gave them a vision in our prayer meeting. And the Lord said that it was the things that we watch that are causing us problems. It can be too much on the phone or too much on the internet or too much on the television. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Too many movies. Come on. There's no life. They're just stories somebody's written. Unless they're true stories. But the Lord told me before COVID, he woke me up one morning. I want you to tell me your experience when COVID came. Tell me something God told you. He woke me up. And he said, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And I thought I was still dreaming when I woke up and I went to the other end of the house to wake my friend up. I said, are we going to court for something? She said, no. Nah. She had to sleep, I don't think so. And in just uh, two weeks, we hear of COVID and then Bobby, what's his name? Connors. 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 Almost had the same visitation. A light came in his house and words came out of the light. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? And he said to the light, who are you? And what do you want? And the voice in the light says, he said, everybody in the whole country was in court, including the nation, the individual, and the church. And the light said, I'm looking for a revolution of righteousness. No cleverness in us. No deals. I don't care what it is, Lord. If you've got to open something up that's closed up, open it up. Drain it of the poison that's there. The festering that is there. And let's show God, come on, that we're righteous people. Come on, let his light shine. Everybody might forget you and not want to have anything to do with you. That's all right. If the Lord be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Just want to just share a quick vision before we stand up and pray. Earlier I saw the Lord was had these baskets like this basket here and they were wrapped in his glory but then I saw in front of the baskets it was stipulation, stipulation stipulation be mindful of my gifts be mindful of my gifts. Now we know what the word stipulation, it's agreement, it's a covenant, it's a promise. Be mindful of my gifts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can you just stand up? I want you to stand up because this is important. What we're praying about, our nation is in huge mud pile. I'll just say the mud pile. Uh, and really reach down into your belly. Reach down into your belly. No fear. Whatever God is going to pray through you, He answers the prayers of His people that love Him. Amen? He's a covenant God. 
Hallelujah. Now, you know I like to pray in the Indian way, which is <laughs> makes me shake in my skin. Hallelujah, Lord. Reach out. Reach in. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we come before you, Lord, with our hands raised high. Come on, use your spirit language right now. Come on, reach out. Reach out. Reach out. Reach out.
still love us and that you care about us, God. Oh, we praise you, God. We praise your holy name. Yes, thank you, Jesus. that it wasn't 
it was a spirit we were fighting against their movement, against their movement that was saying, it's my body, my choice. And I thought, if they only knew that God was talking about his holiness, if they only knew, and there were men in there involved in this too, but anyway, I'm going to pray because I'm sorry, I can't even look at you because I'm so fearful of that. But so... I'm just going to say, Father, you begin a good work in Arizona, Father God. Lord, you begin something good here, Father, with this party, God. And I'm asking that you continue to move on our behalf. There's just a few of us, God. But that little bit lost this state, Father God. Help us turn this around for your honor, for your glory, your movement, your your glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for every 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 opportunity we have to pray for every baby, Lord, every unborn child, Lord God. I pray that you put watchmen on the wall to pray for these and pray them through to life. And I speak life to those that are on the on the precipice, Father, ready to go back, back to the Creator, Father God. And I call forth their life in the name of Yeshua. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. And I thank you, Lord. Oh, Bless you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord God. Whatsoever things are good and pure, but think on these things. What the Lord showed me, he showed me pearls. And pearls, many times I see pearls, and the pearls are, are he paid the great price. These pearls are his that are being that uh, need to come to him that are being born again. I thank you for so many. And he said, um, today... There are some that we need to go deep sea diving for. And I call forth the deep sea divers in the name of Yeshua to go get those pearls that are, are stuck, Lord God. I thank you, Lord. I call forth that they will be free in Jesus' name. I thank you for those pearls in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was meeting with the Lord this week. And um, he told me, don't read now. I just want you to go before me. So I put everything down and he showed me uh, what was happening in this nation and uh, in the way that I was, uh, I, I started and I found myself under wagons, wood, wooden wagons and they were following a trail. I'm going to make it short because it's pretty long. But anyway, after that, I found myself on the side and I looked at the people and they were like, and memorized. Is that, am I saying that right? Memorized. Yes. They were like in a trance. Memorized. Yes. In a, like in a trance. Yes. And they were all from different nations. And the Lord tells me, um, would you like to see where they're going? And um, before I could answer, um, I was looking at a very black uh, abyss wall. It was huge. And, and the wagons, they were like, they were um, going in there. They were just disappearing in, into there. And the Lord says, let's go in. And I went in. And all I could see is darkness and a lot of screaming and yelling. And so the Lord took me out of there really quick. And he says, let's go to the back of where it started. And so we went to the back. And there was two forks. Messengers were on one side, and um, and the messenger was on the other side. And one was saying, okay, this is um, a wagon trail. You could get on the trail if you like to, and uh, uh, you have all your supplies in there, take it all, and a lot of people were going for that. On the other side, the messenger was saying, here's your backpack, here's your stick, a, a bottle of water, and you go up. up. Okay, he says, let's go further. So we went further, there was messengers out there saying, okay, you're going to have this um, along the way, you're gonna to come to um, a wagon trail, you could choose that if you like, or you could go hiking, and it's gonna be a, a, a little pathway. So the Lord continued to take me further back. He says, let's go further back. And so he took me back and he showed me materialist and the spiritual church so 
we went into the church and we saw what was going on. A lot of agenda, a lot of coffee clubs, a lot of little uh, programs here and there. And he showed me on the other side, this is the materialist world, the materialist church. This side, the remnant was praying, was preparing, was reading the Bible, were praying for one another. They were holding hands, they were coming together, they were prophesying, speaking over their lives, reading the word, Bible study, enduring it, pondering it, meditating into it. it says, this is my remnant that's prepared and they are preparing. We went further back. He showed me a very carnal church. He showed me that everybody was going about their own business. They went to the church one time a week sometimes. Um, they went in there, they paid whatever they put in the offering and they thought that was good enough. And then further back, everybody was just doing their own thing in their house. Netflix, you know, bowling night, uh, you know, ice cream night, movie night, so on and so forth. He says, okay, let's go see what our remnant is doing. And the remnant, once they got to that last road where uh, the fork was, the remnant was very few. One would show up, go up the mountain with their stick, and on the other side, a lot of laughing, a lot of and all that stuff. So, the Lord's saying, my remnant is ready, they're going up. And then he showed me the Jacob's ladder. Ladder. He says, this is gonna be Jacob's ladder. They're going up to get filled. They're going up to the throne room. They're going up to get ignited. They're going up to receive glory. They're going up to, to get instructions. They're going up to know exactly what they're going to do and they're going to come back down because there's a harvest to be brought in. And the harvest is now. These people are waiting and the remnant is going up. They're getting filled just like Jacob's ladder, but they're going to be sent back down. And it's going to be a rotating circle going up and down, up and down. And they're coming down, we're going up and down, we're coming down with our orders, and we know exactly what we're going to do, but we have to prepare for that. The Lord says there are many going into that wagon trail, and very few, just like the Word of God says, many are chosen, but few decide to enlist. We have to be the ones that enlist and do, and do what the Lord's calling us to do. Let me say this, the Bible says that nothing will hurt you in his holy mountain. Amen, amen, amen. Nothing. Amen, amen. And he talks often about coming and seeing it from his viewpoint. Coming to the holy place. The holy place. I mean, there was probably a lot in, was that a dream or a vision? It's a vision. Yeah. Vision. Vision. Probably a lot she can't explain of how God sees the church, but he does have a remnant of people, and the remnant of people are separated from everything else that's going on. It's not their personality, it's not their character, and it's not their conversation. But it's all about, look what the Lord has done. Let me tell you what the Lord showed me. And one day I was in a crowd talking to someone about the Lord and I heard him say, give me some slack. I heard it in the spirit. And I said it out loud. I said, all right, I'll give you some slack. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing else to talk about. Because he said, let your conversation be yay or nay. Amen. Amen. Anything beyond that is, is confusion. Amen. The church needs to tell of the things of the Spirit. Earlier, Ramona said the, Lord, the word was the gifts. Stipulation. Wrapped no, in his glory. It's about the gifts. But he's, be mindful. Be mindful. What she didn't know is that I was studying on that this morning. That's what's on the table. It's the gifts that God gives to the church to use. 
And they work all the time if you'll let them. You got the fruit and the gifts. You got the word of knowledge. They come in pairs in sections of threes. They're active gifts. They're vocal gifts. God wants us to use them. I mean, you can always say, can I pray? If they say no, hardly ever will a person say that. But God wants us to be ready and available in any time, in season and out of season, to minister to people. They're everywhere. They're not saved. They don't know God. And we say, oh, well, you know, we just let it go on by. I let two neighbors die. I was going to go visit them in the hospital, and they died. One died. I'm not going to keep going on this because I don't want to break this the glory that's here. Right across the street from me, on, on Friday when I got out of my car after the prayer meeting, I knew nothing about the man that was in the house. His wife had died the year before. And I said these words, I wonder how long. I said to the Lord, I wonder how long he's going to be here on the earth. And he was gone by the next night. He died in his sleep. But I had meant to go over and ask him. He was a good Catholic. If he knew Jesus. And I didn't get around to it. I didn't know him that well because when his wife died, we took him food and he was very abrupt. He was not nice at all. When I gave him the chicken, it was already cooked. He said, well, I like steak. <laughs> well, I mean, it just tells you, you know, what's there and what you have to work with. But it was always that abruptness whenever I spoke to him. And now he's gone. The police are out there all day long when they find dead people in the house. And I thought, oh, how am I going to be judged because I didn't witness to that man? And then the lady next door to him, they asked me to go to the hospital and pray for her. But her son-in-law took his car and ran it into my house and tore the whole end of my house out. And then come running, he ran with the car and then come running to see if it was something he could do to fix my house because he was a builder. Oh yeah, he's in jail now. I mean, I saw all this in a dream before it happened. But I'm just saying, I could have worked better in the situations. I am doing better now, but I could have worked better. You have to seize every opportunity. Don't hesitate. Don't think it's not important, but suppose they reject me. So they rejected Jesus, and he said they'll reject you. Do what you have to do. But let's see if we can get this country turned around. When is the when is the uh, next year we're supposed to have a new president? If his country gets into war, you know, the president stays in power. He doesn't come out. And right now we're 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 dealing with Iran and it's not nice. I mean, they are really raising a focus. Someone come and pray. Someone else. Last night we were praying and I saw um, something dark, like repenting for all the Satanist statues and the um, state capitals. Then I saw the blood, like a trickle of blood, to repent for the shedding of innocent blood. But I saw a rainbow, a godly, you know, the promise. And to both remember the promise of God, and then I saw rain, and I just kept hearing, if my people who are called by my name yeah. will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear their land. And um, I actually heard God, I mean, I felt like I was saying not many people want to humble themselves. They want greed. They don't want to preach the truth. They want money. <laughs> so, Lord, we ask that you would show us how to humble ourselves again. Yeah. Even today, there is a spirit of conviction and repentance here and the fear of the Lord. Yes. That we humble ourselves and pray. We turn from our wicked ways. And, Lord, we ask for forgiveness for the shedding of innocent blood in this nation and in Arizona. That you would forgive us for the, the, the Satanist statues we've allowed in the Capitol buildings, Father. But we know you're a God of mercy. We know this is one nation under God. We know the foundations of this nation. The synergy of the ages. Though they stood. They have a covenant with God. 
We know that they wanted the gospel to be preached from this nation. And we remind you of your promises that all of America shall be saved. Yes. And we ask for mercy of Arizona that is a first fruit state in the ending of abortion. Yes. Lord, that we will be, and Lord, you will protect us from the tricky bills that are trying to go from yes. state to state. Yes. But Father, not in Arizona, not in our watch. Yes. We are the first fruit state in the ending of abortion. This is a pro-life state. This is a righteous state. That even in our Constitution, the pastor prayed we'd be the brightest state in the Union. And Father, even though there's an urgency in the hour, your remnant is free. And you're a God that keeps your promises. That if we repent, you will answer and heal our land. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you have shown us to submit ourselves unto you. You said if we did this, the devil would flee from us. Yes. Not my will, but thine be done. Pray it with me. Not my will, but thine be done. Lord, in everything, remove our arrogance, remove our strength, remove our will. Even as you pray to the Father, if it was possible. Let this cup pass, but you said, nevertheless, not my will, Lord. It was a hard moment for you, Lord. We have no idea of how deep and how difficult it was for you. Thank you for taking that pressure that we never experienced it. Thank you, Lord, for laying your life down for us. And you said, no greater love hath any man than if he lay his life down for a friend. Help us, Lord, to submit our will in every area that nothing will be of our cause, but it will be for the cross. It's in the cross, Lord, that the blood that was shed that we receive, shall see freedom. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. We repent of our ways, our laziness, our lateness, our uncaring feelings. Lord Jesus, let us feel the burden like the prophets did in the Old Testament. In every chapter, every book it said, and the burden of Moab, and the burden, and the burden, and the burden, and the burden of Nineveh. God, show us what a burden is that we will know how to pray. We will seek to know the difference. And things shall change in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, first of all, last night when I went to bed, I did what Sister Ruth has talked about many times. I said, God, what do you think about this? And I put my hands up in the air in the bed, and the <laughs> spirit of travail hit me like so hard. And I cried half the night. And then I woke up in the morning. I woke up about 5 o'clock, and I said, I said, Lord, I was asking the Lord to show me something. And, 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 and when I was sitting here, I heard this scripture, so I went. I, I knew where it was, so I went, and I'm going to read it. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon, and Perry Stone talked about this, and you talked about us. Sun and the moon will grow dark, and the stars will diminish their brightness. The Lord also will roar from Zion. And the rest of my, my, my message, it, it's only take a minute, it has to do was how do we act when the Lord roars from Zion? And and um, about 6 o'clock this morning, I got a message from my friends in Israel. And you might think, what does this have to do with what's going on in America? It has a lot to do with it, okay? <laughs> um, this, is, this is the word that she said. She said they had been praying for America. And, and, and my friends in Israel are probably the most prophetic people I've ever met. And I've met a lot of prophetic people. I used to be in a ministry where we'd get up for three and a half years every morning and for an hour and a half pray before we and worship before we did anything. So I'm, not, I'm no stranger to prophecy. But these people are real. They are the real deal. And she sent me this. It, it's a quote that everybody knows. It says, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. 
So one of the ways that we fix what's going on in America is to pray for God to bless Israel. And this that scripture that you can't get around. And she said also, this is this is what they this is the message she sent. She said, We pray also Okay. For you and your nation always, as God has planted you in our hearts to appreciate and love. You know, she's talking about Americans, and there's a thing with a bunch of cowboys that just came there, and they did some amazing, amazing things in Israel. The God who parted the sea dropped bread where there was no bread and watered the people in, in the desert. He is with us forever and ever. We never we need to never remember that. And, and the Lord had been speaking to me about manna, and you mentioned it. You mentioned the manna from heaven this morning. And, I, and he said, there's, there's a double message here, okay? For one, it's provision. But the other part of it is, think about like in, in a lot of the old stories when people would get lost, they'd scatter breadcrumbs, you know, to leave a trail for other people to follow. Yes. And uh, so, so this is a trail that I pray that we would all follow, that we would remember what God is and, um, and, and who, who he is. And, and, and that... that the last part of that verse, uh, the multitudes in the valley of the sins, and it, it ends with the, with the, he will roar from Zion. The God, and how will we respond to his roaring? Are we going to be afraid or are we going to embrace it? Because he wants us to embrace the roar that he's doing and the stuff that he's bringing on the earth, which might not be pleasant to be around, but, but God wants to do things that are going to settle things and, and, and to make things better in the long run and draw many people to himself. So Amen. so let's embrace the roar when it happens. <laughs> yes. I want to say two things. Israel also is killing as many babies as America. When God talks about Zion, it's a dual revelation there. He's talking about the church He's waiting for the church to rise up and roar. Yes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yes. He's waiting for the church to rise and shine and say, enough is enough. We're not going to do this anymore. We're not going this direction. You might have close friends that they have a different opinion and they do it differently. They'll be the parting of the ways. It's going to take a close walk in these days to cause God's hand to move. Yes. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yes. The church has not been tricking, trimming the wicks on their candles. It means that when you trim it, it gives a better light. You let God cut away some stuff that's there that's limiting the light from really burning. And many times, listen, I, can, I was just thinking this morning, I don't know of anybody, Ramona's about the only person of all the friends that I have here and my friend behind her. They've died, they've moved, they've gone away. Of all the women we started with, I can call Martha. But I mean, there were hundreds. And some of them stopped coming to the church meeting, my prayer meeting in the beginning before we ever moved here. And Michelle, my associate, was in on a computer weeping. We hadn't really discussed it. She just, two or three of them decided they were going to move on. I mean, they could. We weren't holding them there. They weren't liable to us. But it was a little difference in the doctrine or the commitment that I'd been talking about. Mm -hmm. So they decided that they were going to go somewhere else. And she was weeping over it. You have to know her. She's very committed. All of her life she's been a Christian. Her parents were pastors. And the Lord spoke to her while she was weeping and he said, don't cry my daughter. He said, they've, they've had all they can take it, but I have others that want more and I will bring them. Amen. Amen. Ramona picked me up at the airport when I came here. I think I'd, I'd already moved here, but then I went away somewhere, and you picked me up not long after. Oh, I went to Australia, and you picked us up at the airport. It's been what, almost 23 years ago. She's been our friend. And now we've become older but wiser. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. We see what the difference is. You have to see the difference. And let the Lord make the difference. What I'm saying to you, it doesn't matter who leaves you. It doesn't matter who forsakes you. It doesn't matter what happens. Yeah. It doesn't matter if there's no bread in the cupboard. If there's no food, no, no animals in the stall. Yeah. The point is your heart's going to rejoice because you know you're a friend to God. And God is going to help you. Yes. Now, I, I can tell you, I've seen a lot of people go home. I've had to talk to them before they went. I can't begin to tell you how many people that I've talked to before, just before they died, you know, and tried to tell them I felt God was going to take them home. I had to tell my pastor and Ruth Heflin. Everybody knows Ruth Heflin. How many people know her in this room? I had to tell her. I grabbed her by the collar of her dress with both hands. I'd had a dream before it happened. I really did. She was there for summer camp, and I'd had a dream. Four months before her brother died, and it was two years before she died, I told her the dream that I saw. She said, I can't wait for the dream. She said, I'm late for the plane already, but God always held the planes for her in some way. I said, this is more important than your plane ride. you got to stay here. She said, call me when I get to Jerusalem. I said, Ruth, it might be too late. Don't go home. you got to hear what I, I laid my life on the line. They could have thrown me out. She said, well, tell me quickly. And when I told her, she stopped everything. She said, what do you think? I'm going to die first or my brother? I, I, that's a hard thing to ask somebody and a hard thing to have to answer. I said, I don't think you're going to be first. I didn't leave her out. I saw three of them. I saw her brother go first, she went second, and her nephew went third. The reason why God showed me that, because I had a position in that ministry, and I knew she didn't really hold a part. She didn't have a part there. She had a place in Jerusalem. Her brother was in charge there, so it meant I fell in line next. But I had to tell her, and I literally grabbed her. I said, please don't go. And I told her everything that the Lord revealed to me. She waited, and the plane waited for her, too. I was the one that called her and told her when her brother died that day, and she told me what to do. Before he died, this was in September that I told her this. He died in December. The day that he died, six hours before he died, I asked him if I could have an audience with him. He said yes. He was going to three funeral wakes. <coughs> and I said to him, don't go. Please don't go today. I said, I, who am I to tell you what to do? You're the pastor here. But I'm begging you, don't go to these funeral wakes. He said, I'm going to be okay. He had had some heart symptoms and he kept rubbing his chest. And I kept having this dream of this angel rubbing his chest. I begged him for an hour. I said, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, please don't go. He said, I'm going to be okay. This was quarter to two. At 8.30, he was gone. He was coming back from the funeral wakes. I put myself out on the line, and I begged him with tears, and I begged her with tears. And I remembered that my friend had told me four years before that she had had a dream and don't put your dreams away. Away, Record them. Put a date beside them. You might not even understand it. It might be just a glimpse, a picture. But it means something. But God doesn't give you all of it at one time because it would almost destroy you. It's hard to hold and to handle. It's like fire put in your life. But I do remember that I begged him not to go. And three days before he died, I had a, a little nativity scene. Somebody gave me this terrible nativity scene in pink. Like pelican pink. Five dollars. I bought it at a backyard sale. And it was a treasure to me because five dollars was all I had. And I put it up. I put it on stand on pink tablecloths with pink poinsettias and a little lamp. And it was so pretty. And I thought, nobody will bother it. But somebody took one of the pieces and broke it in half. 
And I got so upset, I just left it in the tablecloth and picked it up and took it to throw it, and to put it away. I didn't even want to look at it. It was five dollars was all it cost, but that was all I had. And I thought, I think I'll go look and see the piece that's broken in half. And it was a shepherd. This was two days before he died. I could have glued it together. You couldn't have told it had been broken. I knew my world was going to come crumbling down around me. I knew I was going to have to leave the ministry. We were going to be scattered. I had no home, no house, no. I think I did have a piece of a car. You know, it would get you to the drugstore and back home, back to church. But I knew it was a turning point. And if you're going to stand for this abortion act, you're going to have to tell your neighbors. You're going to have to tell everybody that opens up to it. You can't. Some people don't want to hear. Because the, the three things the devil chases people with is the pride of life, the lust of the eye, and the lust of the flesh. And when you try to talk to people that don't know God, they know everything, and you know nothing. But you have experienced God. You've experienced His way. And I knew that day when I told him, please don't go. From that moment, my whole life was going to be turned upside down. you got to be willing to stand in a holy place. Let God do what he wants to do. You're not alone. You might not hear from him for a while. I lo you know, I love that because you, then you learn his ways. You learn about him. He's not talking. You say, he's not talking. He didn't give me a dream. Nobody's prophesying over me. The preacher's not even preaching it. But you know in your spirit, this is why I'm after you today. You know because the hounds of heaven are after you. There's something you've got to say and something you've got to do to change the course of this nation. And I've said it, unless God tells me something differently, I don't see it. But our sister said that she saw what? She saw the rainbow at the end. Yeah. Now we have God's promises, but, 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 we have his promises, but every word is conditional. Every prophecy is conditional. Every dream is conditional. It's got to line up with the word. Yeah. It says that God repented for what he was going to do in Nineveh. He said what he was going to do because the people changed. And if we don't change, God is telling us the rainbow is there. The promises are there. The yay and amen is there. But I told Sister Ruth, I had, I knew she could say, don't say these things to me. Or she could have gone to her brother. But I knew, like Perry Stone said, he knew that he knew that he knew from past visitations from the Lord. This country is going to bring the house down on itself. It's already started. The storms. The rains, the snow, the weather reports. How many know how hot it was here last summer? Yeah. Thank goodness the air conditioning worked. Suppose God decides to turn the electricity off. You see, we haven't had what other states have had. We felt pretty safe out here. But everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. Mm -hmm. Everything, every system, every insurance company, every medical center, Every doctor, every payment plan, every loan, every bank, every theory, every doctrine is going to be sh shaken. Yeah. They're not the first people that I had to go to. I had to tell my mother. Do you know how hard it was? I'm a new Christian. And she tells me something God speaks to her. I go to visit her every Friday after I get off from work. And she said, what does this scripture mean? And what she told me. I began to travail and cry all over her. And all I could say was, oh, mother, oh, mother, oh, mother. I stood behind her with my hands on her shoulders. She was in a chair. I knew her days were not going to be long on the earth. She was gone within a month. Oh, mother, oh, mother. So all I could say was, oh, mother. The Bible says death has no string, has no sting on the grave. It's victory. So we shouldn't be crying or pining if people are saved. I never cried over my mother dying nor my father. I knew they were ready to go. I lost all my brothers and sisters and never cried. They were ready to go. They were saved when they died. I'd given them all the roses I could get them. 
without briars. That's right. Amen. 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 I'm trying to tell you. There is something. A flood is coming down the road. I saw it. I've shared it with you a couple of nights ago. I thought the water was everywhere. We could not get away from it. I dream a lot. We couldn't get away from it. But I thought there was a grid under the water, and it was very narrow. And if we could stand on the metal, we'd be safe. And I could hear the voice of someone that was in trouble. And I said, get on the grid. Get on the metal. Just stand on the metal, and you'll be safe. It was very, very, very narrow. And, I, and it wasn't muddy. It was dark water. But then I saw there was a place. I, I drew a little chart on this paper here. There was a place built into it like a, a seat. It was cement. And I, I managed to get over and sit down and I was safe. Mm -hmm. But the voice that I've been talking to, I lost. You get what I'm saying? They weren't following me. Yeah. They See, they were following me by my voice. And we follow the Lord by the things that he says in his word and in prophecy and preaching and dreams and visions. They're warnings many times. And we need to listen. Write them down. And I kept saying to the person, just find the metal and stand on it. It was like this narrow. And I see the Bible says the way is narrow but very straight. And few be there that find it. That's the word. Few find it. That's the remnant that's going to find it. It's not by chance that all this is coming out today that Dora had that vision with the Lord. The remnant was running to the mountain. That's the high place. The high place. God wants us to run to the high place. Now listen, I'm preaching to myself because I've missed it a number of times and I've suffered. I don't even want to tell you the loss, the suffering, because I didn't listen. But we got to be careful with our decisions, our choices, and the places we go. What's important, what's necessary, and what will make the difference. Amen. So there's um, two things I'm going to share. Just with your voice. Two things that I'm going to share. Um, one's going to back up. Perry Stone that we listen to and the other is um, going back to November 2nd of 2020 I was in Cabo Mexico and I'm rushing because I'm there for business and I had to go to a meeting and I had my husband right behind me and we're speed walking and I just felt this gush of wind push me back and as I got pushed back, my eyes became a screen. And in that vision, I saw, I walked in first and there's papers, newspapers, printing, flying. And I'm not sure what's going on there and go into a different room. And in that room, there's a huge TV. And in that TV, it would say, Trump wins the election. Now, mind you, this is a couple days before election. As I said, 2020. Then I get, it's almost like I'm on a roller coaster ride that's attached. That's how I'm moving, like this. Go into another room and I start hearing sirens. Mm -hmm. And then it takes me outside. And the people are at war with each other. And there's fires mm -hmm. and the sirens. Before that, God had started saying, tell people to prepare. Prepare. And not in a way that should be frightful, but in a, way, in a way to just have wisdom, to prepare, to stock up. So I had been sharing that from August. And um, here comes the election. And after the election, you know, everything that went down with that. And I kept waking up with scriptures. My people, you know, um, shall perish for lack of knowledge. And people are going to go by what tickles their ear. All these things. And I'm like, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me? And then finally, I got the answer to the work of the evangelist. So I'm not sure what's going to take place in this election. 
I know what I saw in 2020. Obviously, the year was not the right year. Could it be? Who knows? But obviously, we see him running. I've never been a political person, so for me to have that vision was very odd. A little over a year and a half ago, Mother Hula uh, quoted Ezekiel. And God had taken me to Psalms 106, around 38. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters and to demons and to the gods of Canaan. Then they poured out the blood of these innocent children and made the land filthy. By doing such gruesome things, they also became filthy. Finally, Lord, you were angry and terribly disgusted with your people. So you put them in the power of the nations that hated them. They were mistreated and abused by their enemies, but you saved them time after time. I had shared with a few people the blood that's been shed for these innocent lives before they turned over and obviously um, abortions are where they're at. But the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, which is why we're seeing these states that want to come up and turn it around. What my prayer is, is for the church to rise up with boldness. Over a decade ago, I wasn't Christian my whole life. I was raised Greek Orthodox. Um, I wasn't able to have kids. God blessed my womb. I was able to have my daughter. Uh, she ended up being um, on the spectrum for special needs. A lot of stuff happened, and I was taking Accutane. I felt trapped, and I committed an abortion. So the enemy comes in and makes you suffer so much for your choice after you make that mistake. And for many years, I was held down captive by the lies of the enemy. And last year, God broke me free, and I went to the walk that was, took place in January. And that was my first time there, and an interviewer from Arizona Republic approached me. I, I didn't know she was an interviewer at the time. She goes, why are you here? And I told her, I said, because when I went through this, there was no one to talk to me. And I wish somebody had been there because I wouldn't have done it. So I'm here to share the truth because there's things about abortions that girls don't know. Like as for me, I almost died because they left a chunk of the baby inside of me. So I could have left my daughter without a mother. These are the things they don't share, the dangers of what can happen. And we need to make these women aware of what they're trying to do to their actual body, that they're so much trying to defend. That's right. Besides the word of God, there's so much more that they're not realizing it. And if they knew the truth that God's trying to protect them, yes. they would probably get the scales removed from their eyes. But it takes the church to rise up and not allow, because that's the problem. We feel like if we share with a fellow Christians had an abortion, judgment. How are you going to look at me? And those are the things that the enemy lies. And those are the things that he tries just to keep you secluded, which is what he wants. But there is power in numbers and in unity and when we all come together. And so what did God do for me? I was able to bless a foundation that opens up doors to women that are confused and that they will give them ultrasounds and the alternative of choice and to be able to adopt and all the other options. And that's what we need to pray for, more facilities. Because if we're going to stand as a church and say, don't do an abortion, well, what are we doing to give them the options? So let's pray that we can stand as a church, rise up with boldness, speak the truth, teach them the truth, and then show them that there are other options and provide options for those that can provide options and facilitate and give money towards these causes. So yes, prayers are important. They're the key element that God needs. But our actions also play a role. So boldness, I believe you have spoken earlier, is major in this year. So many things are vital. 
So right now, Father God, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you, Father, that you give us vision, signs, and wonders, Lord God, that you speak to us, that you show us your way through the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God. We pray that we would have ears to hear, Lord God, what you have to say, Lord. We thank you that you guide us and you direct us, Lord God, and you show us which way to go. We ask right now for a movement of your Holy Spirit to invade the United States of America, Lord God, that your nation will rise up, Lord God, and that people would speak with truth and boldness. Lord God, we decree and declare that everyone that knows who you are, Father God, will rise up to another level in you, Lord God, that they will know you in a deeper form, Lord God, and that you would manifest yourself to them, Lord God, that you said that in your word, that if we uh, come near to you, Lord God, you draw near to us, Lord God, so we thank you right now, Father God. For what you're going to do in 2024. We thank you, Father God, that as our sisters preached, um, uh, spoke earlier in 2 Chronicles 5.17, that if, our, if your people that are called by your name will humble themselves, Father God, and turn from their wicked ways, Lord God, that you would heal our land, Lord God. We believe that. We believe everything that you have for us, Lord God. And we're just praying for those right now that are on the brink of making a decision, Father God. Send ministering angels, Father God, in human forms, Father God, that will talk to them, that will speak truth to them, Lord God, that will open their eyes to the truth and the reality, Father God, of what they're about to do. Because we know the enemy is trying to kill and destroy these babies that are going to be prophets in this nation, Lord God. We know what he's trying to do. But Father God, you have the complete victory, Father God. You have won that victory on the cross. We thank you, Lord, for the victory finished work of the cross, and we thank you, Lord God, that you have won it all. In the mighty name of Yeshua, amen and amen. amen. One, I have to share one last thing. I went back. I was actually there for a dermatology appointment in the office where, and I never wanted to step foot when I realized that was the building I was headed to, because let me tell you, you can get amnesia. You want to forget those things. And I'm like, oh Lord, okay, face my giant. I walked in, and as I was walking, there were actually people holding signs. Now, it didn't say, it didn't have fetuses or anything. It was just, you have another choice. And so, right before I went up, I went and I thanked them for being there. Yeah. And as I was standing there, and I, and I shared with them what had happened, they told me that Thursdays is usually a procedure day, which that was a Thursday. And there was an Indian couple. She said, I just tried to minister to these people. Maybe you can. So I went and I reached out to that couple and um, the husband was with her. She had two kids. She was pregnant with the third. And I told her, I said, do you want to leave these kids without a mother? Because that's a possibility. That's what almost happened to me. I just shared and I left. After I was done with the appointment, uh, the lady saw me coming out. She ran. She said the lady left. Her and her husband decided not to do the abortion. Mm. And then there was another woman that came. And when she came, she started yelling and cussing at them. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing there like this, like I'm with them, right? Because I'm standing right here. And she's like, hey, who are you? To and I'm like, so I slowly started approaching the car. I said, I'm not with them. Mm -hmm. I'm like, she's like, but why are you standing there? I said, because I'm thanking them. Why are you thanking them? And I said, because I wish they were here when I came. And as I'm approaching, she's now she's calming down. She goes, well, I didn't have a choice. She was getting physically abused by the significant other. And so she let me in close enough that I was able to pray for her. Amen. And as I'm leaving, the most weirdest things happened. That day, I guess there was a kind of a pro-life conference that took place in uh, Glendale and I get this random message to go to this conference um, that they couldn't make it and they wanted to give me the tickets and I'm like what a day you know everything that was happening well the women that were there ended up sharing my name um, and so to make a long story short I didn't realize the significance of what happened that day because God used what the devil meant for evil in my life and turned it around for good because they say that many times women are there and they cannot do what God accomplished in that simple 30 minutes that I was there with those two people. Um, so if you know anyone that has had abortions or anyone you know that they're suffering and there are classes and they need that, 
um, and guide them and direct them in that because they have a story that women will have a softening to listen to because now when I stand for pro-life and they try to say something to me, oh, you, you, no, you don't understand, I've been there. Yeah. And it's the difference. So encourage those women that you do know to speak up and encourage them to get the help that they need so that they can heal inside. Amen. Yes, I want to share. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, we, what we're saying here, I believe, that is making it a law. We know that women have had abortions, one for one reason or another, and sometimes to take away the reproach, sometimes they don't want the child, or maybe there's a danger. But now it's a law. You can have an abortion. In other words, it's a lawlessness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And where there's no law, there's no order. Yeah. We have to have order in the church, yes. order in the world. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And it can be with anything. We were talking the other day. Now when you have doctors, if, if you say anything in resistance to them, they can just say, well, we don't want to take care of you anymore. Yeah. There's nothing to protect you. Yeah. See, it's the word that protects us. And so this is what we're fighting for. Where there's lawlessness, there'll be every type of problem that you can imagine. Yeah. Anybody, you know what I'm saying? Every type. I've lived in 75 nations being a missionary. And I can tell you where there's little law, where there's little prayer. There's all kinds of terrible things happening because people don't pray. There's just no prayer. That's why there's no rain and famine in a lot of countries because there's no God there. Amen. You have to know this, that God reigns on the just and the, and the unjust, but also I'm trying to disciple this to you. Also, God requires he doesn't make us, but he requires that we worship him and honor him mm -hmm. and recognize him. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in Kenya where they had weddings, it's an all-day affair because they can gather a lot of people together. So that way, the government can come out and, you know, give them anything that's changed in these small places because there's a lot of people there. That's the way they get the information to them. You know, they don't have... Like we have television and newspapers and everything. They'll send a runner to any news, not bad news, you know, anything that's being changed, anything that they need to know notices. It's an all-day affair. And I've been in countries where there's no law. I was in South America, South Africa, where they changed the law. When, they, when the apartheid was done away with, as many as 23 to 30 cars a night were stolen in Johannesburg. You had to hide your cars behind walls and fences or get somebody to watch over your car. I rented a car and I had to pay somebody to watch it because there was no law there. They removed the law. So this is what's happening. You go out there and take all the lights down, all the stop signs down, all the yield right away, all the signs that tells you where you're going, and find your way across the United States and see how difficult and how long it'll take you to get there. You understand what I'm saying? The signs are along the way of what God wants. Yeah. We have to obey. Now listen, it's 10 of 2. And, and God, I hope we've touched you today. Yeah. Jesus. Lord, put a greater burden on our heart that when we pray, yeah. it will sound from the mountain. And it will cover the earth. God, I pray our prayers will become like a river yes. and will water the ground. Lord, it will be like a light and it will shine in the darkest places. Be like rain, Lord, and it will feed the thirsty. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us today that a change will come. Thank you for it. We ask God that you will come and help us. Yes. You'll turn this thing around. It will have a little longer to minister and witness and freedom of preaching. Yes. We ask these things in Jesus' name, in your wonderful name, Lord, the ruler, the maker of all the earth. You said the, the earth is yours yes. and all that's in it. 
We thank you, Lord, that you know when it's enough. And you will help us. We ask you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to bless Israel with the dance, and then we're going to close, okay? We're going to sing. We're going to dance. Richard's going to give us a wonderful minor key somewhere.